Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Builders Podcast. I'm your host, Lee, and today I have the privilege of hosting Tiago Sotomayor. Tiago is a Chief Technology Officer of Vibe, a company focused on enhancing employee engagement through gamification. With the slogan, Unleash the Power of an Engaged Workforce, their mission is to improve productivity and errors by making work more enjoyable and engaging for employees. Recently, Tiago was honoured in the 2024 edition of CIO Views magazine, being named one of the 10 most innovative tech leads shaping the future. Join us as we dive into Tiago's journey, his role at Vibe, and the innovative work he and his team are doing in their industry. Hey, Tiago. Warm, warm hey. welcome to the podcast. How's it going? Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, super, super cool uh, and glad to have this conversation. Lovely to have you here. Thanks so much for joining. Um, so, yeah, I mentioned there in the introduction that you featured in CIO Views magazine's uh, 10 Most Innovative Tech Leads of Shaping the Future. Uh, that was fairly recently, I think. How do, you, how do you feel about this recognition? What do you attribute um, it to? I mean... I guess the the first uh, thing that I would uh, or contributed to this for me it was that uh, we are doing something, or I, I believe that we are doing something that is uh, probably changing one part of the world, uh, which is the the part of that most of us uh, during our uh, uh, day lives we don't think about the people that work in uh, warehousing, so the supply chain uh, from A to Z. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. where, where people, those, those kind of jobs that are, uh, manual repetitive, uh, mm. we, we never uh, think about those, those, those kind of jobs. And what we are doing is that th these kind of people don't have, uh, engagement surveys, don't have, uh, mm. people caring about how they feel about their, their, their job. And right. what we are trying to do is exactly that on that kind of, um, workforce uh, that don't have, uh, um, people caring about them uh, because they will just hire someone that's from wherever, uh, mm. and yeah, they they th that's exactly the point. And I guess that we, doing that and changing uh, the way uh, companies are seeing uh, those resources and making them more uh, engaged with their work and not leaving for extra dollar. Or X Euro on the company ne uh, next next door, it's it's uh, good. And also that you mentioned that I just came from from Saudi Arabia, and mm -hmm. Saudi. Uh, if we think about the the um, the World Cup in Qatar, a few years everyone was talking yeah. crazy about how people were working, uh, the conditions people were working building the stadiums, mm -hmm. and in Saudi we just got our first client, so people are caring about how they manage uh, their workforce and how they're just not numbers and just not someone doing the, the supply chain and they don't care about that. So, yeah, I guess getting back to the question, I guess that was exactly the point. We are kind of shaping uh, and changing. Uh, and what we are doing is that picking up something that we all know. We all know mm -hmm. gamification, but we are yep. mostly using that on a B2C. Uh, you and I probably travel often we go and we collect our miles uh in the airlines or we mm -hmm. go to the cars and we put put uh fuel fuel um so and we collect points that's exactly mm -hmm. the point but we are doing this for for companies uh so i guess yeah it's it's rather or fairly new and that, i guess that's was that was why i was uh nominated for to that Fantastic. So, yeah, also for for social social good, it's uh, super interesting. But so you're essentially giving a, giving a voice right to these um, these workers that are kind of blue blue collar. Um, yeah, exactly. Know, companies blue -collar or workers, industries. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. That's exactly the point. So we are putting them uh, on on the way that they can also first talk about if they are not feeling well, if they don't agree with something. Right. And second, where they are uh, recognized when they do something good. For example, yep. if you if you have like um, 100 today, you have 100 uh, uh, boxes to ship. If you make it in the first three hours, I will get extra rewards for you. Uh, right. On and then you can use it wherever you can use it on days off. You can use it on Amazon vouchers wherever. I mean, it's it's, okay. it's up to the it's up to the client to decide what they want to offer to to their employees. 
Fantastic. And we'll, yeah, we'll get into a little bit more about Vibe and how it works, uh, intricacies and everything uh, shortly. But tell us a little bit about um, about yourself, your, your early career uh, experiences. How I, I believe you've had this good mentorship uh, along the way. How's this kind of influenced uh, exactly. you, your professional development? Exactly. So, uh, I mean, I started uh, working just after college. I, I went to, I, I, I'm born and raised in, in Lisbon. Uh, I lived here pretty much my, my whole life. And, but I decided to go to Madrid uh, in working in a deep multicultural environment, being mm. on another city, going uh, away from home. Um, mm. And I went to Madrid for, for an internship. And then went, but it was always the idea to, to get back to Portugal. Um, coming back to Portugal, I joined this company. And as I said, I had this, this amazing uh, mentor coming to me. Uh, he was back then uh, director of operations at, on that consultancy company. Uh, kind of took me under his wing. Um, and yeah, I was evolving. Uh, by the time I was 24-ish, uh, I was already managing a team. And right. it was step by step until uh, he left the company because uh, he was uh, re- he was retiring retiring mm-hmm. at forty one. Uh, so oh, because wow. he, he, he kind of, I mean, he retired from from this business uh, and he's okay, now yeah, a yeah. karate, uh, karate um, uh, coach or uh, yeah. Okay, do, he has a karate dojo. Mm-hmm. Um, and I decided to leave that company as well at the same time. Um, I joined one more company in consultancy for a small project, and but then uh, Corber, which is what the, the even though we ha- we are a startup, we are uh, inside of this big group. They approached mm-hmm. me, and it was like the time perfect time because I was wanting to change from from this professional services consultancy yeah. kind of jobs for. 10, 12 years and coming yep. to, to more on tech product side. Um, right. And yeah, uh, join, join Corber first and then uh, we founded Vibe uh, January last year. Yeah. And yeah, Cor- Corber being, there's a German company, right? The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That now that essentially own uh, Vibe, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. they, have, they have 99% of or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Yeah, and you 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 touched upon it there as well. It was, it was something I wanted to get to. So you've you've been working in leading positions since a, a very very young age. You said twenty four, yeah, right? Um, yeah. What were what were some of the challenges you faced leading teams so early on? I mean, I can assume um, you're leading you're leading people at that age that are much older than you are, maybe more yeah, experienced exactly. than you are, right? There that, must have been some char- challenges. There. That was exactly the my my first big challenge when when you uh, start a, a new job. And you have, and you take a look on the team, and you have people like that. They have like 40, 42, 43. So uh, pretty much twenty years uh, older than than I was at back then. Uh, it was challenging, but but I guess what they learn, and I, also what I learned in that process is that uh, the age itself, of course, it counts, and and we learn that from every day with the Japanese, where the the age is still uh, something fairly important. Um, but also, yeah. we need to have the mindset of, of leading people and the mindset of uh, leading anything. Uh, and there are people that just, just, they just don't want it. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they want to be a, a technical or they want to have technical expertise. They want to have uh, to be rec- recognized by being technical in mm-hmm. talking in, in uh, my world IT. That's fairly common. But then sometimes they also have to manage people and it goes really bad for them and it goes really bad for for the teams itself and yep. that was exactly the process that I, uh, that I I was talking with them and learning how they sh- they would do it and also mm-hmm. giving them different perspectives uh and yeah that was definitely a challenge but again it was fun because uh they they understand uh, after a few <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> After a few weeks, that um, <clears throat> it was a, a learning process for them as well. Then they understand that right. why I was chosen to to do that, uh, and why for me it was always the the people side and not the tech side. Um, right. And that's why that's why we get along. And even though the first six months probably were hard, 
uh, after yeah, that was yeah. was fairly fairly good for everyone. Mm. With everyone getting familiar to to it, I, I, it's interesting because it's more you know not not from the tech side, not not necessarily in a management role, being able to kind of show them exactly how things are done or should be done. It's more kind of that um, other side where you enable them maybe to kind of exactly. do it and themselves, more right? Coaching, more coaching as well, yeah. more um, showing different perspectives because. Uh, and I, uh, I don't have any problem with the, the engineering background, but sometimes engineers can be two engineers. What I mean is that <laughs> they have that kind of a strict process, um, a learning process or um, thought process that's super strict. It's it's normal. Right. It's where they how they learn in in in, in their college in their uh, life uh, mm-hmm. that they need to 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 do stuff by doing this this and this. It's but a sometimes logical you need, kind of process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes you need just need to steer them. Okay, if we go this way, yeah. what do you think that will happen? And that that was exactly the what happened to to be really good with that team, uh, and led me to leading the team that was just next door. Uh, and after, I mean, I don't know, probably two years, I was leading a full department. Uh, so it was yeah, a good a good a good thing. Something must have gone right. Um, yeah, <laughs> and now and now you're CTO at Vibe, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. And you studied you studied economics, I believe, right? Uh, uh, as I I was wanting to start uh, to start study economics. Uh, okay. Because back in uh, when I was probably fourteen in Portugal, we need to decide that. Uh, what, yeah. So uh, you go to you go to before before college, you need to choose between arts. Um, uh, I would call it something like social. Uh, economics, economics, mm-hmm. or uh, science. And science, yeah. I, yeah. I went to economics. I kind of, yeah, okay, let's let's go to economics or management, something like that. But then, in the end, last minute, I decided to go to to um, to IT. In reality, my my degree is IT management. So I had during my okay. my process, I had marketing, I had uh, economics, I had everything on more on the management side. Uh, and, and I had also, uh, programming, uh, 10, 10 courses of programming, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I started working on, on, as a developer, uh, but as soon as I had the opportunity to, to go to more on, on people side, management side, uh, I took it and, uh, for me, it's, uh, tech is just an enabler. It's not something that, uh, um, I wouldn't wake up to be a developer every day mm. to be a developer. I wouldn't be happy uh, if I right. was doing that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and what what led to the idea of Vibe? You, you mentioned obviously you were talking about your mentor before and going over to Kerba, um, and then you know the Kerba then kind of uh, founding founding Vibe. Yeah. This was was this back in two thousand and twenty two or when was Vibe founded? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Officially, Vibe was founded uh, last year, uh, last January, yeah. so uh, 2023. Uh, but okay. even though we are working in a project uh, before, uh, as mm-hmm. before being a company, uh, before that, um, yeah. the overall what was the inspiration? Idea, exactly. The overall idea for me, uh, I mean, of course, there is Corber, as you said, we have a big group. Um, uh, it has four business areas. One of the business areas is supply chain and uh, where they offer uh, software for supply chain, for example, uh, mm-hmm. what's called warehouse management system. Uh, and and they had the idea because they, they had this, this process that where they have clients in the US, for example, where people simply don't show up to work because... Mm-hmm. It's how the market is, and they go to the the company next door to to for an extra dollar uh, by the end of the day, or, or mm-hmm. just they just don't show up to the work because uh, back in 2021 they got a stimulus check, uh, and that mm-hmm. that's exactly how how the market is uh, down there. And you can look at this and you have two approaches: either the carrots or the stick, and this is the mm-hmm. carrot approach. Um, y- we they had the idea. It was a concept, uh, and then Corver just start hiring uh, uh, people. I was one of them, and we kind of shaped the, the idea because back uh, I was probably the the employee number one for this project. Mm-hmm. And back then, the idea was mostly to kind of pick it up everything that we know from from for example Apple on the fitness apps, etc. But mm-hmm. that's 
is something that we cannot really pick it up for uh, this kind of jobs because uh, mm-hmm. they they don't use, use the, the mobile phone during their uh, work as we do. I, we right. all have, we are in meetings and we have our uh, mobile phone just, just on the same table. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. They just, they enter the warehouse, they put it, everything on the locker and they go to work. Yeah. So yeah. also the same with watches. So we, that was the overall idea and we start shaping it, making more, picking up the data that already exists on the client, on, on the warehouse, the number of peaks, the number of ships, the number of safety uh, hazards or safety um, issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything that already exists and we start gamifying that uh, and make it make it more uh, interactive we still we still have an app for for the for the workers but the overall idea was to make sure uh, that they first they don't uh, interrupt their work for doing this because mm-hmm. that will never work and second uh, that people uh, feel more engaged by the end of the day with the company they work with uh, because right. they see the results, they see that okay today I achieved. I had I had to achieve 100 peaks. I achieved that because they see mm-hmm. the results. So we mm-hmm. are just enabling our clients to show and to 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 show the data to to, to their uh, uh, employees and also making them their life easier. Because if they 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 have. Um, they have uh, uh, the data available. Oh, well, today I did 100 peaks yep. uh, and the yep. goal was 200. You can really, mm-hmm. oh, you need to step up the game. But on the other way around, the goal was 100 and you did 150. Let's do a, a recognition for you. So that's Recognition that's the, rewards. And yeah, uh, yeah, Exactly. So it's more on yeah. the carrot side. Uh, mm-hmm. And getting back to, to your point, uh, you mentioned uh, my mentor. Um the way I always, de- or what I learned from him, and the way we always dealt with the problems that might arise, was always trying to see the bright side and not the the good side. Someone is leaving. Okay, uh, we um, of course in consultancy, manpower is important. But if someone mm-hmm. is leaving, okay, we have the opportunity to either promote someone internally to to see if we have someone that could step up his game. Or her game mm-hmm. uh, coming, mm-hmm. and this was always my my thought process on on this on this kind of um, environments, and that's what I'm trying to bring to to the to this to the to the vibe app. Got you. Um, so yeah, this is an app that that uh, users can your customers are kind of downloading as well, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. it's a B two B app uh, or B two B platform. Uh, because it has more than one app. We have one app for, for the manager, what we call the mm-hmm. manager. Someone has, has a team. Can be someone from a contact center, for example. Can be someone from a warehouse. Can be someone mm-hmm. from a, a last mile delivery. So yeah. someone that has um, a team mm-hmm. or a, a set of teams uh, yeah. will have a desktop application. So a browser goes, types the credentials, can create the challenges, can create the rewards, etc. Then what we mm-hmm. have is our uh, mobile application available for that for for the for the people that has the work itself. I mean, uh, someone that works in a warehouse, someone that works in a last mile delivery, someone that works in a contact center. Uh, right. They they will download the app. They log in. They have their credentials, and they will see wherever they did in the last day, in the last 10 days, in the last week, wherever. Yep. Um, yep. And they can then uh, exchange if they did good and they have good rewards, they can change uh, the rewards for stuff in the store. Uh, and this is pretty much the overall idea, of course, that good. we now have more more uh, applications on the side. We have what we call public displays, uh, because exactly to show the data to uh, people so what we have is that we develop, develop for um, TVs, for example, or iPads mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. in a warehouse showing real-time data, how right. the team is performing. And, and yep. this is super um, uh, good for the teams. For the, for the, we have one client that they, they have, uh, it's an American company, and they, have, um, uh, they use WWE belts like those from, from the wrestling. And, the, <laughs> right, and right. The, the winner of the, the, the challenge of last week is allowed to use that belt during the week 
uh, the next week uh, because you won Fantastic. the challenge. So are they, so walk, are is, they walking around with it like over uh, the, you know uh, over their waist and holding it up high? Look at uh, me. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we received we received some photos of that. I was because <laughs> they told that they were do, start doing that, and it was like, okay, uh, let me see Fantastic. how this works. And then yeah. they send us photos, and I was like, "This is amazing! This is uh, exactly the point what we are doing." And it was super cool to see that. Yeah, yeah. And I guess having this kind of up in front of them, this kind of live live scoreboards or whatever it might be, is yeah. kind of adds uh, incentive, right, or kind of motivation yeah, exactly. to it to each of them. I think, yeah, it's no kind of secret, right, that um, gamification and what you're talking about here can increase um, employee engagement, motivation, right, uh, makes everything a a lot more interactive and fun. Um, and I think I've seen, yeah, I've seen stats um, like that say how companies like with highly engaged employees see, can see up to like around 21% uh, increase yeah. in productivity, even 21% uh, increase in profitability as well. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is clearly an important matter for companies, right? And if we go the other way around and we think about the amount of money uh, that were lost due yeah. to the lack of the engagement people, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they just announced Gallup. It's um, one uh, organization that uh, yeah. manages this kind of data worldwide. And yeah. they just announced that they relaunched the, the 2024 report. But they, they also shared that 2023, it was lost 8.9 trillion dollars worldwide wow. due to lack of engagement. So if you think wow. about this, the number is 8.9 trillions. It's it's insane. It's could be we, we could have a new economy worldwide <laughs> based on that. Exactly. Based on that. Yeah. So it's it's insane if you think about this. Um, mm. And I, I I guess a lot of people, uh, managers out there and C levels and VPs etc. They still think about the that the the carrot uh, the, sorry the stick is better than the carrots and right. definitely not definitely not. Mm. And, no. I mean, I, I, I of course I I am not perfect. The company is not perfect for sure. But one thing that we can say uh, for a fact is that in the last year, uh, everyone working here uh, we didn't have anyone uh, leaving the company. So right. in one year in tech in Portugal where we have. Portuguese uh, uh, foreign companies coming to Portugal, opening offices every mm -hmm. week. Yep. We didn't have anyone leaving. Uh, I guess we are doing something something good. Yep. As as a as a company, and also doing something good for for um, for our clients because people mm -hmm. feel feel engaged that we are building something for this kind of people that normally they are they are ignored in the society or in the workforce. Yeah. No. Exactly. And. You were talking about yeah what like you you flipped what I was saying like you know what what's lost as well which is super oh super yeah sorry interesting but I think also like to kind of ask you a little bit about how Vibe measures like the effectiveness of its engagement um, or empl employee engagement strategies for its clients it's like what metrics are most important to your clients I'd imagine you've got kind of turnover rates right absenteeism yeah. and and all of these but are there these kind of less obvious ones as well that you you can mention. I mean I, I guess the one that's uh, quite quite obvious is the the um, uh, productivity. So we saw, right. for example, in one of our clients, we saw that uh, after one month of rolling out, the productivity al already increased four uh, percent. And yeah. this this has been backed because, for example, this this um, <coughs> this American client that I just told you um, that were wearing uh, WWE belts. Um, yeah. They, at the time when we started, we started with them probably one year ago, uh, they were kind of hesitant uh, because they had like a really spike, like 11% on, on productivity. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did with them was, was like, okay, let's stop the challenge. Let's stop the access to application, remove the everything. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see how it goes in the productivity. And we saw a drop in the productivity. So people, right. the guys were really wanting to 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 have that kind of information, that ha that kind of uh, interaction, uh, yeah. and and productivity is definitely the, the most obvious, even though sometimes it's harder to measure. Uh, but in this kind of industries, it's it's uh, fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. What we are also seeing is definitely, as and you already mentioned it, uh, re uh, reduce of turnover. 
uh, reduce yep. of absenteeism because people mm-hmm. have that reward they want to have they have yep. an eye on on they want days to keep building off. it up yeah exactly yep. Yep. and they yep. they have the eyes on, on days off they have the eyes of i don't know uh, uh, um, amazon voucher or whatever i'm i'm saying amazon voucher because we have clients using uh, that kind of re- rewards and mm-hmm. it's fairly straightforward for people to oh if i do this um, mm-hmm. i have i can buy uh, i can buy in, this, in our store an amazon voucher and then yep. i can change the amazon voucher for for whatever and mm-hmm. of course this this is pretty much the the easy ones uh, what we are seeing as well is that we also feel a lot or we launched uh, six months ago something that we called the engagement surveys exactly because mm-hmm. we don't want just to measure uh, productivity because, okay, we can measure productivity because based on the numbers that we collect, but yeah. the engagement itself, uh, how people feel, uh, how they feel about their manager, how they feel about their work. So we have a set of questions uh, that we can uh, uh, send to, to the users from now and then. Uh, and they will answer to 100% anonymously. And then we see it uh, that we're kind of, of course, we have a spike. Then sometimes it goes down because people, mm-hmm. uh, they have, well, it's more stress or, or they have more uh, uh, personal issues. I don't know. And then spike again. So it's kind mm-hmm. of, a, I would call it an Everest where, or the mountain. You can yeah, kind of spike and go down yeah. and spike yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and that's exactly uh, the overall that we want to measure is the engagement, uh, because as you said, the engagement it's proven that leads to to productivity increase and then uh, yeah. to to profitability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm also I'm interested a little bit like this is like a SaaS platform essentially, right? Where um, it's kind of like a a, a plug and play solution for yeah. for for your companies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like. Talk us, talk to us a little bit about kind of the process of how a company or a client of yours will kind of implement Vibe software from kind of soft, so, uh, start to finish. How would they connect their data to it and everything? Straightforward. I will go. I will divide this into in two phases. One first way. What we want to, and I'm talking a bit against myself, but I want to take also, always the first conversations after. Uh, uh, when we start with the new client after the contract is signed, I want to take out the tech uh, of the equation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. W- uh, this is a fairly new concept and people are a bit skeptical. And if we go into technical aspects, it will take a lot of time to prove value. So what we do right. is uh, we want to prove value uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. So we remove tech from the equation. What we do mm-hmm. is that we have a uh, um, a part of our software that allows people to upload Excel spreadsheets. And most of the right. softwares that people are using, uh, ERPs, WMSs, wherever, mm-hmm. you can export data. So mm-hmm. it just mm-hmm. uh, export yep. on one side and import on our side. Yep. Yep. So we, we, we remove tech from the equation. And mm-hmm. then our process is after the contract is signed, uh, we have uh, two weeks where our customer success manager goes and understands data, understands people, understands... <clears throat> what people wants to achieve, what the, the client wants to achieve, it's, if it's a problem with, uh, for example, absenteeism, if it's the problem mm-hmm. with engagement, if it's a problem mm-hmm. uh, with turnover. We understand yeah. that. And then we came to the client, we have to, uh, one workshop and then two training sessions. And then we come mm-hmm. to the clients and say, okay, we have these 15 types of challenges that yeah. you can use. It's for yep. you to use, it's there. We we yep. we will not move uh, remove it from them. What we recommend for you to achieve this and this and this is this type of challenge based on yep. this that you shared with us. And this process yep. is really good because we challenge some some preconceived ideas on the clients because oh uh, um, I don't want people to to run on, on the warehouse uh, to achieve this, this kind of results. Okay, mm. fair. I understand. Yeah. So you, for one side, you create a challenge that, for example, the first one to reach 200 peaks in a, in one day will mm-hmm. win. On the mm-hmm. other side, you create a challenge that if we don't have any safety issue, everyone yep. wins. 
So yeah, you balance yeah, yeah. that. That's, You're balancing that's, it out. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's exactly the, the 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 process that we do with our clients. After uh, the tech is proven, what we do is we have an open API. Uh, we we connect to the, to the to the system. So uh, either we fetch the data or the data is directly sent to us. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, that I, I'm here uh, on straightforward. Sometimes it's not that straightforward if you go on big big companies. Again, because IT levels, you have uh, you need to involve cybersecurity, you need to involve uh, mm-hmm. uh, the IT, the compliance, etc. It takes mm-hmm. more time, but that, that's exactly why we want to take tech out, out of the equation first. Because yep. otherwise, uh, it will take a lot of time for us to even start using it. Uh, yep. And yeah, that's uh, we want to achieve uh, a two week or. Right now, it's exactly that, but we want to make sure that if we sign a contract today, mm-hmm. by by uh, Wednesday uh, in, in two weeks, you will have it up and running with right, trainings, right. with uh, yep. with um, the all the information that you need to to run uh, the software. So that's that's the overall idea. Fantastic. So you have this kind of. Um, a high degree of kind of support in the the initial phase as yeah. well, where you're kind of helping them kind of define these use cases um, yeah, exactly. for them, essentially. Uh, interesting. And you spoke earlier about kind of um, industries like warehousing um, systems and everything. You were talking about blue collar, yeah, uh, um, yeah industries. Um, I've also seen on your website that it um, the 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 product here, the service that you're offering, fits all industries. So. Do you, have you had to kind of tailor the product at all to kind of meet the needs of these different industries? Obviously, like white collar and office work, they're more, far more kind of mature maybe in these kind of uh, engagement surveys and stuff like this. But like you're saying, maybe the blue collar side of things have maybe don't have that structure in place. So have you had to tailor the product at all? Or? Uh, no. So it's, it's, uh, it's really a, a good question because it was something that back in when we started building uh, the software, there was the overall idea that this will only work on on um, on warehousing, for example. Mm-hmm. And I always challenge that that preconceived idea. Uh, and the first thing that we did uh, it was to test internally in our software and product teams. So, mm-hmm. kind of uh, making sure that we have one something that works, and two something that uh, people from any part of our business area would uh, feel engaged working with. And of course, uh, developers and product team, uh, UI, uh, design teams, uh, we have a lot of KPIs, everyone probably uh, on top of OKRs or something like that. So what we, and this will lead to what I'm going to say next, is that what we have built is something that um, if there is any KPI, SSS KPI existing in the company, Mm-hmm. that's led and impacted by human behavior, we can gamify it. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. just need to, we, we just need to make it, uh, if we can make it on an Excel spreadsheet, like uh, person one did this on this KPI, we can yeah. gamify it. So there is nothing uh, involved uh, on for uh, customization for uh, software development or uh, salespeople or uh um, warehouse or hospitality. It's just a matter of <laughs> if you have KPIs, if you are measuring yeah. it, yeah. Uh, and you have human Im- impacted behavior uh, yeah. on those KPIs, we can gamify it. Mm-hmm. Super. And you, you've touched a little bit of, upon like recognition and rewards and everything. Um, now I think yeah, recognition is recognized right as a key driver of employee engagement. Some studies that I was looking at in preparation. Uh, said that 69% of employees would work harder if they felt like their efforts were more appreciated, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah super important. But um, how does Vibe incorporate recognition and rewards into its gamification platform, or is that kind of decided upon uh, exclusively by by the client? You've mentioned kind of Amazon vouchers and stuff like this. What other kind of um, rewards are, are offered? I mean, it can we can start really from uh, something really uh, simple, or uh, more interactive, fun. As as I mentioned, this client they're wearing WWE belts. We can go, for example, for <laughs> it's gonna uh, be the it's gonna be the best thing I've ever it, ever exactly. Heard from it. <laughs> it, it's something probably for for us uh, here in Europe. It's something that 
might be a bit weird. But then if yeah, you think about maybe, the yeah. you, if you think about the US culture uh on the competition, it's something quite straightforward. Mm. Um mm. but can be so I mean days days off is also always a thing that people spe- specifically in US again because paid time off is not co- fairly uh straightforward in US. So uh that is, is quite quite important. Uh but it can be really something like own merchandising. Uh, mm. if you have, I don't know, if a company has, uh, uh, glasses, uh, from, yep. uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a mug that they, they have and it's some, somewhere out there and no one knows why, if you put it on a store, people will be able to buy it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. it has been built to, to have anything. Um, also what we have learned is that, uh, Sometimes the, the 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 driver for people to to f- have that recognition it can be super uh, um, simple. Example: mm-hmm. What we have learned, and it was something uh, really fun to to develop, was to include in the fi- in the in the product itself in the mobile application for the workers the ability to give kudos uh, to one another. So mm-hmm. we have three types of kudos. Uh, great teamwork, uh, if I recall, great teamwork, great mentorship, and another one that I can recall, sorry. Uh, but pretty much the idea is that if I can recognize my peer, and mm-hmm. that's also something that my manager will see that I'm recognizing my peer, yep. this, that uh, snowball effect will will start. People will start more... Uh, um, Cooperating is instead of comp- com- 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 having competition, Competing. of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you have that balance, uh, and that recognition is also uh, something that uh, you can, the manager can use and say, "Oh, you did a good job. Uh, let me yeah. reward you some something." Uh, or this week, uh, yeah. this person did a really perfect job. I'm rewarding them with an mm-hmm. X amount of points, uh, mm-hmm. and then they can show change change these points for wherever. Yeah, and it and doesn't doesn't always have to be kind of financial gain, does it? It's exactly. Kind of, you know, yeah. it's not just financial gain that kind of motivates uh, uh, people. It, it will, it will, it will definitely depends on the markets. Uh, for yeah. sure, here in Europe, money might not be as important as if mm-hmm. it's it's for example probably in in Middle East or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In US, definitely the pay time off. Uh, yes. Yeah. The ability to have a day off uh, yeah. without losing money. Uh, yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's something that for, for the U S folks, it's fairly important, for example. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know that as well. Um, but yeah, I think going back to that kind of wrestling belt, um, <laughs> story, I think it would be something super, super fun and, uh, interesting to try and incorporate, uh, here in our company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. be. No, um, but I mean, uh, yeah. what, what we have learned also with, with the client is that, for example, um, it's they have big warehouses are, are around uh, US, mm. uh, and of course, of course, in US you have a lot of events that here in Europe uh, we probably never heard about. And one of them is the March Madness, and the March Madness mm-hmm. is something for the the college uh, basketball, uh, and they yep. they pick it up a city uh, or two cities in, in in reality, and they put every college team basketball. Doing the tournament like uh, World Cup or something like that, until yeah. you have, and it's only on, in March, and until you have a championship. Mm-hmm. But uh, on the side that you are still having your cha- normal championship, so it's just an early event for for March Madness. And mm-hmm. what what they also to build that kind of team spirit. Uh, what that client sh- share with us is that they want to build that March Madness competition between warehouses. Warehouse one mm. versus warehouse two mm. To, mm. to kind of have the feeling that uh, I belong I belong to the company first. Yes. Yeah. But then I belong to this warehouse. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to do all I can for my warehouse. Right? It's kind of like exactly. a, a regional league or, or exactly. similar. And, yeah. and that's, that is, again, it's, you don't need to have any reward on, on, on that. You're just making everyone uh, working together, having team spirit. And the reward will probably be something that they wouldn't care about. They just want to say, we won the March Madness of the company. Yeah, yeah. 
No, super, super, super. Um, and I think I'd, I'd like to get a little bit of information from you on these, um, yeah, a little bit more in kind of your your career career so far. In in terms of, I saw I saw in the um, I think it was in the article in the CIO Views magazine about you kind of mentioning like learning valuable lessons from from your mistakes, right? Um, not to focus too much on mistakes, but obviously mistakes are super important and kind of actually help people get where they. Uh, where they yeah. are, right? Can you talk a little bit about some of the mistakes you've made and maybe share a specific uh, example of how it's kind of changed your, your approach to leadership or whatever it might be? Definitely, definitely. Before, but before jumping to that, let me just say something that we have yeah. implemented here in, in Vibe. Yes, yeah. And uh, it's, quite, it's quite straightforward. At the beginning, it was kind of a, um, a shock for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. But the overall idea is that we have is that uh, every two weeks we call it um, uh, Happy Friday Vibes. Uh, so uh, pun intended with the name. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we have, it's not a town hall, it's like 45 minutes. We bring everyone and we don't have, we have an agenda just for, for the sake of um, uh, making sure that uh, we, we go through engineering to product sales and marketing, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but the overall idea is that anyone can talk, uh, anyone can bring up uh, items uh, and can be successful items and failure items. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, everyone was like always talking about success. And naturally. It's, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> yeah. it, it's yeah. the, but you need, as you said, the way we learn uh, about mistakes and the way we, we uh, understand what led to that mistake and the impact that it has it's mm. much, much powerful than on the other way around. Um, yep. So it was kind of a process, and now everyone starts coming coming to, yeah. uh, I wouldn't call it feathers, but uh, problems that they uh, encounter along the way, and they, they yeah. go uh, into that. Uh, yeah. Getting back to, to my career. So, I mean, the first and, and the, the obvious one um, was... Uh, and that that it's something that really uh, caused me troubles uh, personally. Not the client understand right. the situation, but for me, yeah. I, I was not able to um, uh, s not not sleep, but to, to feel super rested the day I found it found this out. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like uh, Outlook Ninja. I configured everything super good with rules you when you receive this email goes to this folder etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah yeah but i had one rule uh that was marking as read uh and this client sent mm -hmm. me an email uh and the email was in was a uh, urgent and important email and the email was kind of there forever until mm -hmm. i got mm -hmm. a new email and yeah. i the reason uh, that email went to that folder uh was because of keywords specifically word that was not related to, to, to that. So it was marked as read because okay. uh, the rule was wrong. Um, right, right, right. So you'd set up automation to exactly. kind of send an email to mark as read based on certain keywords, but that automation exactly. had been set up incorrectly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I got an email from, from the client saying, uh, okay, I'm waiting for this uh, in the yeah. last X amount of days. Uh, can you please, pro and I was like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And I start mm. crazy looking. Yeah, I didn't have the email. I called them. Uh, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And then mm. we had a conversation. And then he told me, search for this. And I found the email and I understand why. So after yeah. that, I removed the Marcus Reed for every rule that I have on my, my Outlook. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, it was not working um, <laughs> and that that is something that uh i i uh yeah also some that kind of it was a big failure that kind of shaped everything and also shapes uh, something else uh right now i don't have any folder on my outlook so everything is on inbox yeah. uh uh which is some somehow Challenging. crazy yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but what i also learned is that moving um, uh, up to the ladder on EVP, manager, etc. One of the most important things that you, uh, at least from my perspective, is to be in control of your inbox and your messages. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, if someone is reaching you, yes. it's probably because 
it's important. So you just mm -hmm. need to make sure that you reply on a uh, uh, fast, timely manner for, for them yeah. because yeah. otherwise they wouldn't reach you. Uh, yeah. So yeah. being in control of your inbox, and that, that was exactly something that I was not in control of your inbox, and that's yeah, why yeah. I had so many automations. And mm -hmm. right now I don't have any, uh, and I don't have any email to read. All my emails are replied. Uh, all yeah. my, yeah. Uh, and that's, I need, it's something that I, I definitely uh, learned from, from mm -hmm. that mistake. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's been with me since, since then. It was probably eight years ago. So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, no one likes making mistakes, right? But if, if they result in, uh, you know, uh, these in learnings. Kind of things, in yeah. learnings and everything, then they're for Definitely. the good, of course. Um, but to talk a little bit about these failures, again, to go back to where you're talking about this kind of every two weeks Friday session uh, in the in the company. Yeah. Um, it kind of sounds like you were, you know, initially in the beginning, maybe it was hard for people to kind of talk about failures or kind of challenges or hurdles, whatever yeah. you want to call them. Um, how did you kind of then cultivate a culture at Vibe where, where maybe these failures were seen more as uh, like an opportunity for growth rather than a setback and kind of encourage them to kind of share them with, uh, with other people in the company. One, one thing that's um, in, in software development, everyone goes crazy with bugs. Um, mm. uh, and for me, Oh yeah. Uh, bugs, a bug, it just something that happened because if there is something that I've learned in the past, uh, or I'm, I mean, I still, I still have that, that thinking is that, uh, there is no perfect software and the software, right. uh, always have something that you didn't try or that you didn't test. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And it's okay to have bugs and you just need to, if you are aware of them, you need to do like, is this urgent? Is this uh, yeah. will affect uh, the... How, how severe is the book? Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. And then you yeah. decide, but you need to be... Of course, there are sometimes that are bugs that you are not aware and you have the, mm -hmm. the phone call of your client saying, oh, this is not working and you are... Whoa, yeah. really? Uh, yeah, you just hope you find it uh, as soon as possible, right? <laughs> exactly. But for yeah. me, what I'm saying is that uh, that kind of telling people that we don't have first we don't have perfect software please don't kill yourself coding uh with all the scenarios testing scenarios because it's it's not possible it's just simply mm. not feasible and people start realizing that software is not perfect and uh, the bugs it's normal it's a normal thing um and of course, we don't want to have uh, bugs that the client goes and clicks the first button and it's not working. That's right. that's not the point. The point is a scenario that is new to us. We need to, okay, it's okay to have that bug. Uh, we need to incorporate, learn, and then the next time it's just not new to us again. So we mm -hmm. will not make it uh, again. But that that learning process for, for making, making sure that uh yeah a failure or uh, a hurdle as you said it's just something that allows people to grow uh, mm -hmm. allows people to um understand because uh, what i what i learn also throughout my career is that a lot of people do not understand what the actions they do um or how the actions they do affect the the environment because right. It it goes fine. If if goes fine, no one is thinking. No one is doing post mortem. No one is thinking about right. why this went wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So this kind of making sure that everyone understands. Okay, this leads to this. This leads to this. Okay, we learned yep. this. And this yep. kind of uh, uh, thinking and making sure that people understand what they they are doing. And I started with the bugs because the bugs is the for me the the easiest example. Because everyone mm. understands where where the bug is. Sometimes it's right. it's it's problematic. Uh, a mm -hmm. bank having a bug where the rounds is not good. It's a problem yeah. for the yeah, bank yeah. and for the for the the client. The customer. Uh, yeah. But but again, it's it's um, it's something that you just need to 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 understand uh, and handle it with care. And yeah. that's exactly the point. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the point being that these kind of learnings of, 
you know, if there's a bug in place that can be, um, I don't know, whatever it might be, it kind of just leads to a learning that you try to avoid such a mistake or a it, bug it, in this case happening or occurring in the future, whether that's kind of yeah. having more kind of automated test coverage or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, not um, even with 100% test coverage, you would have uh, zero right. bug soft software because right. uh, then the human interaction comes. New, new and things are being added, things are being changed. Yeah, uh, And the human interaction, I always remember and I always give this, that, this example to the team. Uh, a few years ago, there was a bug discovered in on iPhones that the person was touching the screen like, thousand times or something like that. Mm, mm. I mean, this is a scenario that no one... <laughs> You're not building no, a product uh, with that in mind, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, uh, yeah just normal. Uh, yeah. For me, if I, if, some, if a client comes to me and says that, oh, I did click this button a hundred times, I would make it... Uh, I would use it that for, for marketing uh, uh, purpose, yeah. for example. Because yeah. it's something uh, that a client did 100 clicks on this button. Why? Let's mm. make a video with him. Let's do marketing purpose on this. Uh, for yeah, me, yeah. it was it will be always my my kind of mindsets uh, because it, it's it's a good marketing for me at least. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what's uh, what's your vision for Vibe um, moving forward? Uh, tell us a little bit about the setup of uh, the company. How many how many employees are there? Where where are you based? Um, you're in so, Lisbon, right? Yeah, I'm in Lisbon. Yeah. Uh, officially, the 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 company is in Porto because our uh, corporate mm -hmm. um, main uh, office in Portugal is in Porto. But okay. we are 100% remote, so uh, everyone okay. is working from from their homes. Uh, mm -hmm. What we have and across Portugal, what we have yeah. uh, is that we have uh, my uh, buddy Nick. Uh, he's our chief growth and product, so uh, we are just mm -hmm. us two as senior leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. reporting to the within the board and reporting to the boards. Uh, yeah. And then we have uh, a team. We have around 34 people right now uh, mm -hmm. between engineering, uh, products, um, design, sales, marketing, and customer success. Okay. Uh, so we have these 34 people. Uh, mm -hmm. Nick lives in, in Germany, so it's really fully remote. Um, yeah. We meet, of course, me and him meet more often uh, when we travel to fairs or something like, uh, but the team, we m put everyone together two times a year, uh, yep. for, for doing something that also a bit, uh, different instead of doing, um, uh, uh, team buildings, wherever we also do, we also had team, bu have team buildings there. Mm -hmm. But what we do is that we have one idea and we create an hackathon uh, or a few ideas, sorry. And we create mm -hmm. an hackathon internally where we have teams, and the mm -hmm. idea is from from the conceptualization uh, until yeah. production in one week. Uh, in one week, wow! Yeah, in one week. So, I mean, of course, it's not a major feature, but something that right, right. we really, really want to have, and we use that for accelerating. And the team mm -hmm. building, everyone kind of competing because they want to be the first one, team, exactly. the first team to achieve that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, that health, it was healthy competition again. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we do two times a year. Uh, and yeah, we just did, uh, I mean, just, uh, yeah, it was for me just, but, but it's beginning of March. We did, uh, the first one, uh, we are um, planning for doing the second one or the second, yeah, the, the second and last in October. Um, and yeah, th that's the, the overall idea where we, we bring everyone together. Uh, everyone is in port in Portugal. Nick is in Germany, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's the just the setup right now. Moving forward, of course, I mean, right now the team, as I said, uh, the team is completely stable. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, hired just someone to to come to us to work in sales, but we don't have any for now any plans to to hire uh, more people, uh, mm -hmm. and not because. Uh, it, just because we have the, the stable team, we know our roadmap, we know uh, everything that we want to deliver, it's achievable with this team. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is no need for hyper-growth strategies uh, right. that then leads to uh, possible in the future um, uh, layoffs. So we don't want to, to use that. No, um, no. And yeah, that's, that's it. So we have currently clients pretty much everywhere or not everywhere but 
uh, we have uh, US, Canada, uh, UK, France, Portugal, um, and uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so across uh, multiple geographies, multiple scenarios, different scenarios, and multiple... In- ah, Germany, sorry, I forgot to tell Germany. And mm-hmm. uh, we have in uh, last mile delivery, we have uh, warehousing, we have uh, automated warehousing, which is kind of different from, from the warehousing. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's going good. Super. Yeah, since what well, starting early 2023, it's quite a yeah, it's yeah. quite a journey so far at least. Um but how do you, how do you what, what's your plan in terms of revolutionizing the the employee uh, engagement uh, space? What kind of product um features or um releases uh, do you, do you, do you have planned so, or if you're uh, able to look so far yeah, ahead? Yeah, yeah, we have I mean, of course that's uh the the employee engagement world uh, or sorry, the other way around. The gamification world is is uh, mostly for B two B, mostly related to um, uh, learning and the learning mm-hmm. part of, of of it. So if you do this course, you get this amount of coins or points, whatever. Right, right. And this is the fairly standard for for gamification. Uh, of course, that we will uh, in in probably in the next year uh, we will come to to. To, I mean, in 2025, we'll come to the learn to the learning part or doing the learning. Uh, what we are now building is mostly for making sure that the workers uh, use the app, uh, and we have interactions, micro interactions with the users uh, when they are out of their work. Because du- during the work, they, they will not have inter- any interaction, but out, out of the work, uh, they will have they will use the app. They will. Uh, yeah. What I normally say that work-life blend. I'm coming home to to my wife, uh, to my kids, and uh, I have this kind of um, oh, uh, today I got a hundred coins. If I remember right. correctly, I have two hundred coins right now, uh, and these two hundred coins I can buy tickets for uh, the the NBA to to go with my kids. And of course, yeah, yeah. this this engagement, people will feel a lot more engaged. So we are building that part of micro interactions, making sure that people will get uh, notifications of work about mm-hmm. the results. And oh, you can now buy this item in the store. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is something that we are evolving. And also, uh, the the what we learned that we thought that at the beginning was not super important. Uh, but now we are feeling that's probably the most important feature, which is the public displays. So allowing people yeah. to see live their results. It's yeah, something yeah. that, uh, yeah, it was something that we didn't have pretty much uh, three, four months ago. And yeah, now yeah. it's pretty much all hands on deck on that uh, to to evolve the solution. So Yeah, yeah. So the workers can arrive in the morning and see themselves top of the, uh, the leaderboard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I'd also point. like to get your take a little bit on because obviously we've been talking a little bit about how the your products being used in like um, you know uh, blue collar industries and everything where you know people are much more kind of uh, at work uh, in the yeah. sense that they're kind of you know it's more kind of physicality or kind of manual work and everything like that. But yeah. if we were to like look at the other side and like in the age of remote work, you you mentioned that you guys are one hundred percent remote. Yeah. Uh, we could assume that it becomes even more important for this kind of employee engagement uh, to a degree, right? I mean, the fact that teams are much more distributed nowadays yep. compared to years ago. Um, these workplaces and environments on the other side are far less physical and can result in employees um, feeling a little detached, let's say. So this maybe kind of adds a little bit of you know more complexities, essentially, in how we manage and measure uh, employee engagement. What's your take on this, it's like it kind of makes it even more important that we have such products, right? That can kind uh, of motivate these employees, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, what I also feel, because as I said, we are 100% remote. And of course, uh, having team buildings or going to the office, it's it's something that's uh, it's quite straightforward for people to feel uh, engaged, engaged with the mm. company because they engaged have a, a different space. way, right? Yeah. Exactly. What what I, I guess for for the world that ha- now can be 
uh, more distributed and more and more. Uh, uh, I mean, anyone can work from from wherever they want. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's that we cannot use the same strategies that we were using back then. So right. uh, forcing, uh, in my opinion, forcing people to go to the office two or three times a day, uh, it will not lead to um, being more productive. It's it will people. Right. It needs to be the context. People, there are people that likes to go to the office every day, mm-hmm. and I'm fine with that. Uh, mm-hmm. But we also need to learn that. Uh, uh, and by the way, I was one of those people uh, before a pandemic. Uh, I was yeah. one of those people that enjoyed going to the office every day. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, if I still if, am, <laughs> yeah, I still love that, going to the office. It's not to say that yeah. I have to, or I'll always be that way. But I, I love going. Yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Office, so. But right now, for me, uh, after after uh, pandemic, th- that definitely changed for me. So right, if I right. now going to every day to the office, uh, it's something that would cause me so much stress that mm-hmm. would would I would try to avoid it. But yep. you just we just need to to understand that uh, the way systems now, and we need to also learn that, for example. Uh, as async world a uh, work mm. it's the it's the goal we can i can send a message and if i just uh uh type someone text someone hey how are you yeah. uh and i want to have the reply back to then ask wherever we mm. are losing time i could just go hey how are you can you send me this file please and the person will come will see hey thanks uh, i'm fine here your file Mm-hmm. We didn't lose any time, uh, but we are so much um, uh, so so adapting that sync work uh, yeah. that sometimes it's harder to to avoid that. Um, mm-hmm. And that's that's exactly my point. So if you go to this kind of industries where we have distributed teams, uh, we, we we need to evolve the way we are seeing employee engagement, the way uh, uh, we measure, the way we talk with with uh, people, uh, I mean, building up a town hall for 200 people or 300 people mm-hmm. uh, for tomorrow, it's mm. something that will probably cause a lot of stress to a lot of people. It's, yes. it's yeah. it, it, while if you were in the office, yeah, bring someone, everyone to, to, to hear, mm-hmm. it's okay. But it's not mm-hmm. something that you would do or I would not recommend to do it in, in this type of world right now, at least if you are remote. Right. And I think connected to this to this point, to a degree at least, I've seen you define success for you as like a, a bridge between personal and professional yep. life, right? Um, and I've seen you kind of, you, you've spoken a little bit about how your kind of leadership style is maybe kind of people-centric and everything. Um, yep. How, um, can you share a bit about this kind of philosophy and how it's kind of I impacted mean, your leadership? It's, it's... Um... I mean, I've, it kind of goes without saying, of course, a lot of people talk about this kind of, um, just to give a little bit of context here, yeah, they talk about course, this no, um, uh, work-life balance. And I think um, I've also seen that it's, it's no kind of secret. Companies that support work-life balance see a, a great reduction in turnover and not surprisingly high levels of employee yeah. uh, engagement, right? But this, my point here being is that we're emphasizing the importance of maintaining a balance between your personal and your professional life, right? And this is not always easy for many, particularly those building products, getting them off off the ground, right? So, like, how do you achieve this? What's your kind of philosophy here? For uh, for me, um, and I, I mean, I guess everyone already read it uh, a few times. There is a lot of LinkedIn posting about this. Uh, that oh, uh, I want. Uh, Someone is saying to the boss, or to, to just recently new company. Oh, I want to do to go to the to the medical do- appointment with my daughter, something like that. Mm. And someone is saying, "Oh, I, I hired you. I trust you." Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly the for me. That's exactly the point. I I, I tell all my people, uh, if you need to go to the bank because you are signing the new lease for your. Uh, uh, apartment. If you go yeah. to your medical appointment, or you just need a break to be outside because it's a, a lovely weather and you want to enjoy mm-hmm. the sun, go mm-hmm. yeah. and enjoy. Uh, we ne- we measure outcomes. We not. I'm not measuring hours. Uh, yeah. We need. To, everyone is adult enough to know. I need to do this. Uh, yeah. I said that it will take me three days to do it. This okay. I need to do it. If you do mm-hmm. it. Uh, working 3 a.m., uh, if it works for you, 
it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 I know that I was causing a lot of problems uh, with my team uh, back in back then because I was sending emails uh, at 10. Because mm -hmm. I like to do that. I, I like to go and uh, review what I did. And, yep. okay, it's missing this. Let's send an email. And I stop it. I start scheduling for after. Because it's my process. Yep. I normally, mm -hmm. I shut off at 5. I go mm -hmm. to gym. Uh, mm -hmm. And then... I have dinner, blah, blah, blah. And then I come yep. and I have like half an hour on a computer just to think yep. about, uh, to see what I'm going to do next, next day yep. Uh, yep. and review that. So, mm -hmm. and I was causing a lot of stress on, on the team. Yeah. And that, that's the point. <clears throat> I need to have this balance uh, to have, to shut off at five, to go to the gym, to uh, meet friends, uh, have a walk with my girlfriend or whatever. Um, yeah. I need to have that balance. Otherwise, uh, I, I'm not. I don't think that I'm successful. Uh, no, uh, and I, and think I cannot see lead the company. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see it like in a lot of these surveys that are sent out. Right? It's like, okay, what do you value most about your your role or, or your company? It's like work life balance is always yeah. up there, right? As one of the f the first or main things they say. Um, yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's fun how how in the past I've told people about. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm I'm moving away uh, from. I love to be wor to work here, uh, yeah. but I'm moving away because in that company they are offering me uh, fifty percent more on my salary. Okay, right, right. Did right. you do your due diligence on this and this and mm. this? Oh no. Mm. Did you yeah. went to Glassdoor to check how people talk about uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. work life balance? Because the if the employee MPS at that company, yeah, yeah, exactly. If if people are offering. 50% above the, the, the average. Hmm. I mean, they they can because they have money, hmm. but it might also lead that they cannot hire on, on that's on the average salary. And mm -hmm. they, if they cannot hire on the average salaries because something is fishy there. So yep. just, just do the due diligence, uh, understand the company because you ended up winning more money. But then yeah. you are not uh, living, uh, and you are not uh, using the money for making things that you like and enjoy. Uh, no, exactly. Well, well put. Um, and I think just uh, another thing that I'd like to mention. I heard you you mentioned it earlier, and I, I think I read it as well that you stated like technology is just an enabler for people to achieve something, right? I think that's what yeah. you said. Um, how does this belief influence your decisions as a CTO? I think. It's particularly interesting in in light of the like this rapidly like evolving tech landscape, right? And uh, widespread introduction and integration of AI in business processes. <laughs> I mean, so many people like are talking about how AI is taking over significant decision making or or creative roles and everything like this. But I mean, you're kind of you're very much kind of like this is just an enabler for people to achieve something. Exactly, people are kind of uh, always going to be uh, in control, essentially. Yeah, uh, that's that's exactly my thought. Uh, I don't think AI will. I mean, I at least in our lifetime, uh, yeah. Uh, while I'm still alive, I don't think uh, uh, um, AI will take control of of it. What I also mm -hmm. think is that, uh, of course, it's a there's. A lot of tools that can help, definitely can help, but there are also a lot of uh, marketing uh, behind it. And mm -hmm. for me, uh, yesterday, it, it's fun because I, yesterday I just read that uh, people were a bit crazy with um, uh, GitHub Copilot uh, that was going to create uh, 60 per or 80% more productivity on developers and blah, 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 mm. blah, blah, blah. Mm. And mm. then... Uh, University of Purdue in US did a survey and they went to the codes generated by GitHub Copilot and the codes people would give an, uh, in Stack Overflow for the same problem and mm -hmm. more than 53% of the times the code from GitHub was wrong. Um, okay. And that's the point. Uh, of course, I understand GitHub people saying, oh, we increase 80% uh, productivity. Yeah, I, I I can understand if you are doing uh, uh, optimizations on the uh, the or if you are building um, uh, coverage on tests. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. But building complex uh, problems uh, on software, yeah. 
you need mm. to understand first the problem and sometimes or right. most of the times people cannot state the problem and mm. for stating the problem you need to understand that uh, in so much depth that you would be able to explain to wherever exists uh that problem and it, yeah. sometimes it's not it's not possible uh right. and that's that's the point so for me the technology it's something important but mm -hmm. i i don't want to use i am one of those that i don't want to use uh we by the way we didn't launch and yet any ai feature in the product why mm -hmm. because we didn't figure out anything that uh would create something significantly significantly uh good mm -hmm. to use ai to to the product we will not right. make any manager uh, life easier with one AI feature would not mm -hmm, make mm -hmm. any, I mean, anything. And yep. that's the point. Building AI or using technology. You don't just, you the, don't just do it for the sake of it, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. And that's no. what, what they want when they, uh, someone from a team, oh, I saw this tool uh, to do this, this, and this. Okay. What's mm -hmm. the point? What you are trying yeah. to do? Why are you looking at the tool? And not why? Why aren't you looking at the problem? Because mm. normally people, oh, I have, we found this tool. Uh, let's go mm. and try to find the problems. Right, right, yeah, yeah. The looking that's at it not, from the, the the wrong way around. But uh, no, I, not, I I hear what you're saying. I think it's kind of you know there are some things that it's really really good at already, but some things that that it's less good at, and it's just a matter of like you know accepting that, uh, acknowledging that, and maybe like you know uh, trusting that it's gonna get better and better, but it's gonna uh, take course. a little bit of time before it gets uh, there. Uh, uh, and right now, what really on LinkedIn, what bugs me a lot is that you can really understand right now when when uh, uh, it's a uh, Uh, AI text uh, because right, they are right. always yeah. have the same patterns. And it loses you are seeing, it, its meaning, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, if I'm going to to one of those and oh, write me a post about this and this and that, and then yeah. this you are doing exactly the same, and we have the same post. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not authentic. It's no, yeah, no. and that's, yeah, for that's, sure. that's I think it's kind of a problem, uh, more of a problem for for companies now as people kind of realize that it is maybe AI generated and kind of loses that yeah. authenticity, you could say. Yeah. Exactly. No. So that's that's exactly the point. I, I don't like to use technology for the sake of using technology. I, I'm not, I mean, if if tomorrow is coming a new, uh, uh, the best ever software to code or the best new language, uh, I would be rather uh, uh, um, passive on that mm -hmm. or moving to that new super technology because mm -hmm. first I will have a problem hiring. I mean, mm -hmm. I could go to you uh, to, to hire <laughs> yeah, yeah. people because Absolutely. you would have it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, sure. but then, then, then that's the point. Uh, I would have a problem because I wouldn't have people to hire. I would, mm -hmm. uh, I would just moving for the sake of technology and not for the sake of what this technology is trying to solve. Why this mm -hmm. is better than the one that I'm having. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's the that's exactly the point when I say that technology is enabler and not the the what should be the lead and the focus mm -hmm. on on of the product of the company. Yeah, no, fair enough. I think wrapping up then uh, here, a last question for me. what advice would you would you give to um, aspiring leaders in in the tech industry, especially those aiming, like I was saying, to blend this kind of professional success with personal uh, fulfillment something that's not very very easy for everyone so i i guess i have uh two uh the first one is uh, have fun uh having fun sometimes is overrated or underrated sorry uh mm -hmm. but it's kind of important if you have you don't have that feeling oh tomorrow is monday uh you need right, to have right. fun of course of yeah. course you can you can have you, you need to uh, uh earn enough money for for your sake for but If you are making a lot of money and you are not having fun, or if you are making uh, the enough amount of money and you are not having fun, uh, it's it will be a difficult Monday every every week, and that's not something that I would uh, uh, advise uh, mm. people to to have. Uh, right. The Monday it needs to be some uh, a new day uh, yep. and not ha having that kind of bad feeling of Mondays. 
Yeah, uh, we have this uh, we have this badge at the office, right? That uh, I don't think any of us are wearing it now, although we do truly believe it. It says, "I love Mondays." <laughs> I mean, Monday, Monday is something, it's a day, so it yeah, should yeah. be the same, the same as Friday. Uh, that if, right. of, of, of course, the excitement of Friday is normal because then you have the weekend. But yeah. I mean, I don't see a problem on, on Mondays. And so the first one would be definitely have fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the second one, it's something that I took from, so in my uh, personal life, one of the things that I enjoy a lot is travel. Uh, of course, I guess everyone loves, likes to travel, but mm-hmm. I go. I like. I like to go to uh, restaurants. So, uh, even though I don't like the the words, uh, I would call it uh, myself as a foodie. Mm-hmm. So I went. I mean, probably a few times to one of the best world restaurant worlds uh, uh, restaurant in the world in Italy. Uh, that's on Netflix show. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. That's kind of uh, a thing that that I love, and there is one uh, chef called Essen Blumenthal, and Essen is yeah. uh, uh, has one one sentence uh, that's that's lovely. He says that um, uh, perfection is uh, sounds fragile. Uh, perfection is the enemy of enemy of creativity. We are killing creativity when mm-hmm. we are trying to achieve perfection. Uh, one, mm-hmm. one perfection is. Because you need again and getting to the failure process, etc. Uh, mm-hmm. Perfection—it's just something that, uh, as as a software, probably does not exist. Everyone right. tries to uh, try to aim it, aim it. Yeah, but yeah. if you take that out of the equation, and mm-hmm. uh, you would be, you would have a work-life balance uh, more more balanced, and mm-hmm. then you would be able to have fun uh, and kick the creativity for solving pro- for problem solving for uh, I mean wherever uh, because yep. you are taking just perfection out of the equation yep. so those uh, two I, think I would say very 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 good uh, advice I think the perfection is very relevant for the for the product people for the builders right it's uh, it's kind of you follow that more kind of lean startup approach right where it's kind of MVP um, and then kind yeah. of iter- iteration yeah iteration. I think it's super super MVP. important as well um but thanks, Tiago. Um, and I think it's uh, yeah, a good way to uh, bring an end to to uh, the episode. Thank you so, so much, Tiago, for, you. for joining Thank us you. today was... and sharing your journey, your insight. Uh, yeah, inspiring to hear uh, about Vibe, um, your kind of dedication to you know, building this positive and productive uh, uh, work culture. So thanks so much for sharing everything today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. And um, yeah, for our listeners, don't forget to check out Vibe and follow Tiago's work. Um, And thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Builders podcast. Until next time, keep building and ciao.